I'm Dan and this is Art and we're from Moose Meat and Marmalade and our plan today is to cook some wonderful healthy food that's really great for people that need to cut out sodium or at least reduce sodium from their diet. We're going to show you some tips, some techniques and you're going to end up with a delicious meal. And we do want to thank BC Renal for BC Kidney Days. Exactly Art. This is all about fresh, delicious, vibrant, healthy food. What are we going to make? Something with flavor, I hope. We want, it, we want to add a lot of flavor because renal diet excludes salt and sodium, right? So I hear. So how are we going to do that? You've got a plan. Well, I thought we should go with lots of fresh herbs, lots of lemon juice, lots of citrus, and make things a bit crispy and roasted and tasty. And apparently, uh, people who suffer from kidney problems also have uh, lower energy. So if somebody's cooking for themselves, you probably want to have a make, make the food in such a way that there's leftovers. That's a great idea. And also, how about if we can make it energy efficient so you use one pot to do two parts of the meal? That's how I cook all the time, man. Should we get cracking? <laughs> Let's do it. So, What's your plan? You've got a, you've well, got I've a menu, got, right? I've got a, I've got a plan and I thought we would do a potato salad, crushed potatoes with herbs, um, a salad of asparagus and arugula and zucchini, and then some roasted salmon with salsa verde. Tus okay. Tuscany, your favorite word, Tuscany. Or is Provencal your favorite word? I recognize some of the words you said, but just, just show me. Give me something to well, do. Well, why don't you cook, cook the potatoes? My understanding is we want to try and remove some potassium. If you want to remove it all, you double boil it. Is that right? Boil it twice, gets rid of more potassium. Is yeah. that it? But I think if you hack them up, you get rid of some potassium. And that's right. good. If you're trying to cut down on potassium, great tip there from my, um, my friend Art. Boil them twice and throw away the water and you remove more potassium. If you cut them up rather than cooking them whole, you also remove potassium. And we're, of course, not going to put salt in the water. So Art's going to cut those up and get them boiling. Five second rule, ten second rule, <laughs> overnight rule. <laughs> so does that get rid of more flavor though, boiling something twice, especially potatoes? I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you? Are, are we allowed to use butter, saltless butter, salt Yes, butter. we have butter. Butter's fine. Good okay. Lord, can you watch where you're pointing? Uh, how do you want these cut, sir? I want them cut up and boiled. Okay, cubed, sliced, quartered. Well, we're going to crush. Many ways to do this. We're going to crush them up in the end, but leave the skin on. So half. I'm going to cut them in half. That's good enough. I'd say quarters. Quarters. All right. You're doing that very well. And uh, shouldn't you be on to something? Well, I'm going to get on to something. Don't you worry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the salmon roasting. Now, wow, this potato is stuck under this grill. Sa ah, well done. <laughs> now, salmon, this is lovely salmon. This is spring salmon, often known as king salmon, or the correct term is Chinook salmon. And wonderful fish. Big, chunky, meaty, full of protein, full of omega-3s, and naturally low in sodium. And here's my belief. To make cooking a bit more energy effective, cook more than you need and be left with a meal the next day. So we're going to pan roast the salmon. Pan roasting, a technique we see on menus in restaurants. We're probably trying to avoid restaurants to cut down on sodium but we can still use restaurant chef techniques at home. And pan roasting is a technique that gives you this lovely, crisp, wonderful uh, flesh, and it's nice and moist inside. Skin on, skin off. Skin, skin off. off. I'm not, can you believe it, going to put any salt on here. It's so natural to go and get salt, but I'm not doing that. We're going to get oil. Okay. What kind of oil? Just any old oil? Some canola oil in the pan. Canola, all right. And, of course, you know this art. But skin side down, usually. Skin side down, but in our case, we're going to go flesh side down. Okay. So that it doesn't go brown and we can use it to look beautiful. I just think without the salt... Brown is beautiful, hasn't anyone I told you? I, I agree. <laughs> I spend my life lying under the sun trying. <laughs> is it hot? Stick your finger in and tell me. 
No, not yet. All right. Is this boiling yet? Well, I'll turn it up. Maybe. There we go. All the All way around. Right. Well done. There we go. So, is, is, it that, is that enough potatoes for you? I think so. Do All you? Right. I think so. You love potatoes, don't you? I do. They're uh, really, really versatile. Underrated, man. Now, do you, do, you, do you hear that? It's hot. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Look, we're not cooking with salt. That can be problematic for flavor. It doesn't mean you can't use the right technique because crispy fish is always going to be tastier and more appealing than sort of soggy, limp fish that's stuck to the pan. Would you agree? Yeah, well, you know, in the old days, a lot of people didn't have salt, including a lot of indigenous people. That if you, if you weren't near any salt water, it was yeah. hard to make salt. We had to get used to eating meat without salt. Without salt. It's a funny to think of that now, but yeah. Okay, so lay the fish in, and lay it in, and then the key thing is leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't prod it, don't poke it. Just leave it. That's the hardest thing not to do. I know. You want to check, you want to lift to see if it's brown enough under there, right? Yeah, and it's the worst or thing you can do. Or to see if you're cooking it too fast. Yeah. And like you are now, cooking it too fast, don't you think? Nope. The do you? It's not too high? I think it's perfect. I, think, right, it's, right. I think what we've achieved is perfection. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it, is, it is cooking away, and we're using salmon. What are some other fish we could be using? Pike, trout, lake trout is... Awesome. Yeah. Pickerel. Pickerel, beautiful. All kinds of uh, wild natural fish. Yeah. On the coast here, we've got lingcod, rockfish, halibut. And you grew up with lake fish, didn't you? The other good thing that I would want to do if, if I was on this diet yeah. and I couldn't have salt, I would use smoke. Nice idea. Natural smoke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it brings out, again, more oh. of the flavor. Well, what we're going to do is take some time. Look at this. Is there any indigenous thyme in North America? There is. There is? Yeah. It's smaller. Yeah. But you could still taste that little thyme flavor. It's hard to find. Love it. I love that. Yeah, I love So I love we're going to take this thyme, put it all over the top like that, take the whole thing, and pop it in the oven. So our, our potatoes are boiling. No salt in the water, of course. We've got quite a lot of water to try and remove some of that potassium, even though we're not boiling them twice in our case. The salmon's roasting in the oven with the thyme. The oven was preheated. And now I thought we'd make salsa verde. Salsa verde. Green S sauce. Green sauce. Indeed, it is green sauce. And we are using capers. Normally, we'd use anchovy as well. Anchovy is very salty. Capers can be very salty, but we have to remember that we're not going to use much on this dish. So we're using no salt whatsoever in the entire dish, and the only little bit of salt will come from the capers, but we'll use a very small amount on each fish. So in actual fact, this is incredibly low sodium. So it's not completely sodium-free, but it's pretty damn low. Exactly. All right, what are we going to do with the capers? Well, you're going to get that container and that blender. This giant pot No, here? no, no. The plastic. This one. <laughs> Can you stick it back in? <laughs> this is so huge. It's going in that little yeah. thing. Yeah, it'll, wow, it will, it'll fit in. Big. I no, it'll fit it in. Gonna we'll get, fit, we'll man. get it in there. You stick that back down there. Hold on. And I've got a trick up my sleeve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to remove some additional sodium from the capers, I'm going to do this. I'm going to squeeze some of that brine out, and I'm going to give them a rinse. And now we've reduced the sodium even more so. And the flavor. Arguably. <laughs> Pop that in there. Good. <laughs> you, now, you really think this is? Of course not. We need to put more things exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> so you're, in, you're the putter inner. OK, what do you want in there? Garlic. I want how some. How many cloves? How many do you want? Three? Uh, two. two. There what we else? go. Mustard. Go One for it. One tablespoon. Why not? And uh, butter? No. No butter. L uh, Mint and parsley. How about olive oil? No? Yeah. I was going to do the olive oil. No, no, no. But let's put... Let you want a deep loose, right? I want a deep Yeah, but we can do it roughly oil. like this. Like, look. Put some, put some in like that. 
right. You do some mint. Get some mint. Get some mint in there. Do we want a deep loose or just roughly? Roughly, a bit more. A bit more mint. Yeah, I think so. Let's just pull off some leaves. Let's deep loose properly. Let's deep loose properly. Well, these. Well, it's getting pretty full. Now it's looking good, isn't it? So you want uh, any liquid in there? Yes. I think we want a mixture of olive oil and canola oil. Why a mixture? If you just use olive oil, it's a bit too strong. Okay. But we do want olive oil for that wonderful, I mean, it's a very healthy fat. So some canola yeah. oil and some olive oil All like right. that. And nothing wrong with a splash of water. All right. We all know it's healthy to have some water in our diet. Very good. Now. So you want me to go ahead and blend? There is a safety catch on it. <laughs> so you have to press the safety catch first. Where's the safety catch? This, I, I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so excited to watch this. <laughs> There's nothing happening here. Look, you press that down, get it going, then stick it in and go in and, in and out. <laughs> can you handle that, sir? I'm good at sticking it in. And what? Press this press down. Press that. Safety catch off. Oh. Get it going. Stick it in. All the way in. You can take your thumb off that now. There we go. It is kind of squirting a little. There we go. Keep going. All the way in there. In and out. In and out. You're doing very well. Oh, it's getting really mo moist. It's looking like a, a sauce. Yeah. But it's not very green. It's called salsa verde. It's not very green. It looks more like a yellow sauce. I'd say that's green. You think? There we go. Good enough. Good enough, huh? Well done. You want to lick this? Nope. All right, what are we going to do with this? Here, let's take... Ah. <laughs> you don't trust me. No, I do not trust it. But I tell you what, those machines are great because the washing up You're is minimal. You're wrapping it up and putting it away. You're really... Uh, yeah, afraid of me. I am. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the washing up with those machines is minimal. This is now in a container you can put in the fridge, and it's great for, you know, not expanding yeah, extra. Yeah, and if you don't use it all, you can put it towards something else. Exactly, absolutely, yeah. It's a great sauce. You make that, you can put that on fresh pasta, you can spread it on a sandwich. Give it a taste. It's got no salt. Normally, you would have put salt in here, right? So give it a little taste. It's very good. You are allowed to use a certain salt substitute, like dash or something, some, once in a while? Arguably, there are things you can use. As but long as they don't contain sodium. As long as they don't contain sodium. And this, even though there's mustard and capers, we're using a very, mm. very small amount on the entire dish. Right. So let's move so on. Just set this aside. Set that aside. Oh, look at that smoke. How's that salmon doing? We're going to pull our salmon yeah. out now. So the temperature, 400 degrees. Now, don't you forget that handle is hot. Here's I always forget that, and I always burn. Here's the chef I'm so trick. So used to having the chef grabbing. trick. Do that. Keep it on there. And just leave and that it to remind, rest. Reminds you exactly. It. Leave it to rest. So we're not going to cook the top side in this case. Nope. You're we're just, just going to leave it. it. Yeah. Leave it. Just leave it like that, and that will that will just finish cooking all the way through. And uh, so, where does the flavor part come in? There's going to be loads of flavor in that. <laughs> it's going to be flavor, flavor central. You just wait and see. Undercooked salmon is going to have more nope. flavor. It's going to be perfect. Now, piece of butter, because we are allowed butter. Okay. Take some butter and just put a bit of butter over each salmon, please. Is that break a, break is it that up. Salt. Salt. Salted butter. Un, or not? Unsal <coughs> unsalted butter. Okay. That's better. Unsalted butter. Very good. Well done. Except so for the one that's, that's all right. Off. Here. You want to lick these? Ooh. So we'll leave we'll leave that to get bubbling away. How are your potatoes doing? How are they doing? Can you poke a knife through? And not quite there yet. Should we get onto our salad? Do you think? Yeah, let's do that, man. Here's my idea. We've got water boiling there. Why not cook our asparagus straight in that water? And I don't buy into this whole thing of snapping each asparagus. You, what a, you should remove the rubber bands, though. What a waste of energy. You ready? Yeah, yeah. There we go. 
and they're just going to steam in that in that hot water. Well, people need to know that asparagus doesn't cook as long as potatoes, so those potatoes were about half halfway done. Halfway done, okay. I would say. All right. They must, yeah, probably so about halfway done. We throw a lid, add more water. There we go. All Good right. Good enough. Good enough. What Salad. Next, I've learned that term from you. You know that. Art. What, what? Over over eight years working together. I've learned the term good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I use it regularly. It's improved my life dramatically. Um, depending on what you're doing, there's certain things that should, you should not take that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <clears throat> okay. So, peeler. Um, we're going to peel some zucchini. I like this. Not everyone is comfortable using a knife, let's be honest. And I think using a peeler is a very easy, safe way to get lovely strips of zucchini like this. So you're, this is what you're getting rid of or this is what no, you're cooking? No, that's what I'm cooking. You're going to cook the peel of the zucchini. I'm not, not going to cook any ah, of it. You're I'm going to dress it. That's ah. going to be our salad. Can you find some arugula there, please? Well, it won't take much to find it. I mean, pick it up. You know what? people should do, should, we should try sometime, is grilling salad, grilling lettuce, grilling all of this stuff. We should, should Smoking it, then grilling it. Smoking and grilling, I okay, can't. How much arugula do you want? Well, One some. One handful. Maybe a bit more. Two handfuls. Now, Art. Enough? Two and a half? Enough. What could we use instead of arugula if we were, say, in springtime and there uh, were all the greens okay, coming all up? All right, young dandelion leaves. Oh, nice. they got to be young, otherwise yeah. they turn bitter, like me. When you get old, you get bitter. Old and bitter? <laughs> <laughs> what else could be used? Uh, lamb's quarters. Delicious. Uh, nettle. Is nettle it, is, is lamb's loaded. Lamb's quarters the same as pigweed? Some people call it pigweed. Yeah. Generally, pig farmers call it pigweed. But that doesn't exactly sound appetizing. Does it? Does. Lamb's quarters sounds much better. <laughs> what else? Well, nettle. Nettle is so loaded with iron, potassium, uh, no, iron, and all kinds. Of vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C. It goes on and on. Remember to blanch it first. Remember to use gloves when you're uh, harvesting to harvest nettle. It, yeah. And don't over harvest in one area, right? No. But some places are so abundant, you're not going to make much of a dent. Do you remember the first time we tried picking it together? We yeah. We got stung we got pretty stung bad. got stung lots, didn't we? So there's our arugula. How's that look? It looks Good? Uh, interesting. It looks like, um, I don't know. What would you call that? That's a salad? Yeah. This is a salad. Yeah. Okay, well, let's mix it up and see what it looks like after that. Because okay, right well now... They look like somebody ran over a snail or something. Look at this, though. See our asparagus? Our asparagus is cooked. And I have a little trick. All right. So as not to, um, so as not to need a lot of messing about and straining things. Just get your asparagus, put it in a bowl, and run some cold water over it. OK. Oh, jeez. Hot. <laughs> Why didn't you put one of these on there? That, that hurt. There we go. But yeah. you're not burning. Nope. You must there we go. Now, and you don't want to cut those. You're going you to leave take them. that. Let's have a, should we have a nibble and see how we did? All right. Remember, there's no salt. Hey. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Doesn't need salt. How many times are you going to double dip in that thing? I switched in, so COVID safe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, salad ready to go. Now. You don't want to cut that asparagus full length. I think full length. I think it's going to have some texture. But let's be honest, there's no salt in there. It's, <laughs> it's bland, ladies and gentlemen, without salt. So now, how do we bring it to life? This is the key thing. Isn't how do we bring it to life? For? Nope, that's going on the salmon. Oh. Lemon juice lemon zest and olive oil all right while you're doing that i'm going to check these how cooked do you want these little son of a guns sample that as long as they crush you're yeah. happy I'm so you start this crushing those up with some butter and any herbs you like parsley mint i get to arugula. i get to strain this right yeah 
and there's more herbs in the fridge if you want them. If you want something, I'll, I'll, I'll find it for you. And how do you want, you want me to just rough them up, like my old job? Yeah. You got to put butter on there. Do we get to put butter here? Sure, there's butter ready for you. All right. And you said add anything. Well, I mean, within reason. I think some nice, <laughs> <laughs> I think some nice herbs. All right, where's all your herbs? You got any dill? Dill has a lot of flavor. There's, there's, there's another thing I'd recommend. There's arugula, there's mint, there's parsley. Um, I've got basil. Would you like some basil? Yeah, basil would be good. Basil's an, another real flavor enhancer. If you can't have salt. Look at that, lovely fresh basil. How's that? All right, you? perfect. There you go. It looks a lot like nettle. I was scared to grab that. It does. It'd be a good trick. Right, I'm going to get a lemon grater. So, lemon zest. The trick with lemon zest is this. When you're rubbing the lemon, don't rub it for too long in one place. You don't want to get the white stuff in Correct, there. the pith. The pith. We want lots of flavor and lots of zest, but once you get the pith in, it becomes bitter. Um, so mix, go like this, just get the zest off, lovely. And now lots of juice. Remam juice. Ah, I'm not too you don't worried care about for seeds, seeds myself. No, you don't care? I'm very happy when I find seeds in my restaurant food. It means someone's used the real mm, uh, lemon. But maybe not this big one. Okay, get rid of the big I'm one. OCD, it bothers me. Now some olive oil, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rough these up. You don't want the mass, just rough. Roughed up. You Bro gotta take that, you little bat. Yeah, rough them, exactly, Oops. rough them up. Oops, uh, a little more butter, okay? Because I only butter. put one you can piece. Go, I, I get, you can use all that basil if you wish. Don't be overly scared. But it is a little strong, basil. That's true. So we're gonna go with one more leaf, how's that? I wish you had dill. Dill would really give this a nice uh, over the top. Do you want a little dry dill? Yeah, let's do, let's okay. do some dry dill. Because sometimes we don't have fresh herbs at home. And exactly. I think it's a huge shame, isn't it, to feel you can't cook something because you have to go to the store in order to cook it. Dry herbs are a great way to add flavor to food and they're convenient, they last forever, oh. and they're just sitting there oh. in the... <laughs> I'm going to get dry dill. By the time I come back, I hope you fix my stove. <laughs> well, well, the other thing is, uh, you know, you could come from a northern community, like a res, and we don't have fresh herbs. You're not going to find a lot of fresh herbs in, like, Nunavut. So the dry stuff comes in really handy. Dill. That's a deal. Let's put a little bit of that in, all right? And let's fix your stove. Thank you, sir. Good enough. <laughs> I need a tiny bit of olive oil. Okay. Okay? Not yep. much. Because I didn't go crazy on the butter, but I don't want dry potatoes. Is that roughed up enough? I'd say I smash it up a bit more, maybe. What do you think? Ah, God damn. Doing a good job, aren't you? Well, it's, it's a fun job to be able to rough things up and get paid. So for let's it. see. Let's recap, if you will. We've made salsa verde. We use mint, we use parsley, we use capers, we use mustard, we use canola oil, we use extra virgin olive oil and garlic, and we blended it up. A great technique. It will last a long time. You can use it on sandwiches. You can use it as a salad dressing. You can use it on pasta um, or a rice salad or a potato salad, in fact. You can use it on grilled meat, grilled chicken, grilled fish. We did salmon. No salt, of course. We cooked it with some thyme, and we pan roasted it. So we're going to have this lovely moist salmon with a lovely crispy exterior when we flip it over. It'll look much better when we flip it over, don't worry. OK. We made a salad with asparagus. We cooked the asparagus in the potato water. So we didn't need to get another pot out and boil more water. <laughs> you know what I'm waiting for, though? What? For you to toss that salad. It's just sitting there unmixed. I want, I want to see what it looks like once it's tossed. You're the old salad tosser. There we go. Well, don't, don't spill it all over the place. Is that better for you, sir? You know what? I would have cut some of those long strings in half. You would? Yeah. How is anyone going to swallow that? They're going to choke on it. Well, man. presumably they're going to have a knife next to their fork. <laughs> One would hope. 
Let's make sure of that. All right, now shall we plate? Tell us about your potatoes. What do you do to your potatoes? <clears throat> well, actually, I don't remember. We boiled them. Good start. We didn't boil them twice. You can boil them twice. You can to get rid of even uh, more of the potassium. potassium. And uh, we added a little mint, a little dill, and a little bit of basil. Very good. And, and a little butter and a little of ol olive oil. And here is my tip. When we're used to cooking with salt, and I know many of you are used to cooking with salt, and then you're told you have to go on to a low sodium diet, taste the food. Because this, quite honestly, right now, tastes a bit flat. So I'm... Taste this too. It might be flat. <laughs> now it's the good. time. Yeah? It's good, yeah. All right. I'm changing this, spoons. That is good. This is flat. So I'm going to go with more lemon juice. More lemon juice and a little more olive oil. And you can always bring food to life, but you have to taste it to know it needs something. And in this case, it needed more lemon. All right, so mix, give it a little mix again. Get that lemon through everything, no? You don't want your lemon in just one spot there, buddy. I'll mix it, I'll mix it. Here we go. Now the advantage here is what we've made actually is a great big feast for a lot of people or a lot of leftovers. And I'm a huge fan of leftovers. They require almost no time Except to make another salad. meal. Except salad. Salad doesn't, salad doesn't make a great leftover. Do you mind spoiling my story? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I go back in there the next day, it's always like soggy, man. It's soggy. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay, you're right, you're right. Take your delightful potatoes <laughs> and, and get the hell out of here <laughs> <laughs> and put them on the um, plate. But first, I want to show you how beautiful this is. So, move the time to one side that has flavored everything. Watch this. We're going to slip underneath there. Oh, you see? Look at that. Very, very easy to turn over. Lovely and brown. That is what you're looking for. That's what you get in restaurants, and so often people find hard to recreate at home. But that is pan roasted fish. And the color, the taste, everything is fabulous. And if you're cutting out salt, you really have to get the technique right, I think. So you gotta get that caramelization in there for the extra flavor. Exactly. All right. So, let's take some potatoes now. Let's put some potatoes. And we're gonna do a platter's worth of food. Because I think that's quite, I think that's quite nice. Perhaps you're having people over for dinner, lunch, or perhaps you just want to make a platter and then you can put it in the fridge and eat off it over the next two days, you know? That's quite a sensible thing to do. Spend an hour cooking and then you've got food for the next few meals made. Just like the bread, man. We like to have those uh, pre-made meals, leftovers, and you can get even more creative on the second day. And some things taste better on the second day. That's true. That's absolutely true. Very good. So, how's this looking, Art? You think that, it looks that's looking good? That's looking looking tasty. That's looking good, but um, the true taste, the true test, will be the flavor. The flavor. Now, it's let's a take challenge cooking without salt, isn't it? It really it's is, isn't it? How yeah. important it is to chefs. It's it really it's wars over this over stuff. Salt. Yeah, yeah, it's great true. big salt trades with the. Uh, Let's put these three bits of salmon just there. Now, the salsa verde. All right. So, I get to, I get to take a photo of all this when it, when you're done, right? I suppose you do. All right. Let's let's see how you. Now here's my plan. I'm going to use a. I'm going to use a, a little ramekin. I'm going to put the ramekin here. So people can put their own sauce Correct. on. I'm going to put the majority of it here because if there is any sodium in this dish, it's in this. And it's pretty low sodium. It's pretty low sodium. However, there's no point in lying. There is some sodium in this because That's, the yeah. capers and the mustard. So I put most of it there and then some of it here. And then people can adjust as they feel fit. Does that make sense? Well, that's very honest of you, my friend. You're finally getting honest. In my old age, <laughs> honesty is winning. That well, 
That looks good. I, I need to take a picture, all right? I want to show my kids. If it's not on Instagram, it didn't happen. Is that right? Well, I need to, people need to know Dan Chef can really cook. Look at that, lovely. There you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Art was a great, actually, Art <laughs> was a great help today. Can you believe that? He really was. And we successfully cooked a lovely salad, fresh and light and zingy. We pan-roasted salmon, we made salsa verde, we did sort of something to some potatoes over here, and it's all come together as a low-sodium, healthy meal that anyone can make at home, not particularly expensive to recreate, and will last a few days, and you can eat from one big platter. And remember, our thanks to BC Renal for BC Kidney Day. Indeed. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>